It's summertime! We don't have functional air conditioning over here in the UK, so around this time of year, I like to keep myself nice and cool by reviewing more expansions than seem sensible. Last year, it was every expansion for Railroad Inc. And this year, I'm taking on every single expansion for Root. This is way too much game! And you don't need all of it. So, which bits should you own? That's right, it's time to get out the tier list and dissect every single bit of content that's in these boxes. <laughs> is this an in-depth buyer's guide? Is this an exhaustive deep dive? No. It's neither of those things. It's just one hot, sweaty, tired boy spooning out some opinions that have very low nutritional value. Straight out of the gate, you got a banger. Later games, knocking it out the park on day one with the river folk. These guys, they're f little things. Heads. I like the first half of that. These little blue boys, they're one of my favorite factions. Asymmetric in a way that is immediately exciting because it messes with the core structure of Root. Essentially mercenaries for hire, the otters offer players a protection racket, bonus cards, or travel up and down the rivers, the highways of the forest, but their services come with a price. But you can't let them get too powerful. Most games where the river folk do well involve them slyly trading here and there until they have a critical mass of blue boys they can dump on the board and guide them round like a big wrecking ball. Absolutely terrifying. I was so excited to play as these guys that when I didn't have the money to buy more board games, I ended up making them out of clay. Look at them, so misshapen, so chunky, so wrong. <laughs> I love these guys being in the game. A very silly faction that coaxes out the negotiation that's kind of hidden in the core of the design. And fitting to the core ethos of their faction, they've taken up real estate and have sponsored the S tier. Oh, and to offer a yardstick for where I rank all the base game factions in terms of how fun they are to play, cats are in the B tier, birds are in the A tier, the wooden alliance also in the B tier, and the vagabond is in a personal prison where he can't affect anyone. I loathe the vagabond. What's up, YouTube? It's the lizards. They're still a bit weird. Look, they've been rebalanced and there's been rules added and changed so that they're now a little bit more competitively viable and they present that odd, strange asymmetry that you're looking for in any given game of Root. They're not just some newts that are about anymore, but they're still really weird. This might be because the lizards are lacking in immediacy. What you're doing here is trying to game the discards with the most dominant suit, changing which clearings you're extra good at acting in. So what do you do on your turn? I tried to write this bit in the script from memory and I just couldn't remember at all, which is certainly saying something. Mostly, you're revenge-centered. Lost warriors become acolytes that you turn clearings into gardens that net you a constant drip of points. There's a lot of thematic words flying around the player board here. Convert, crusade, lost souls, sacrifice, conspiracies. But ultimately, they resolve into what you're doing being culty by name, but not by nature. Later games, you need to up the cult dial on these boys. Drink the Kool-Aid. Or should I say, Gatorade, because they're lizards. Putting these in the freaky little morsel tier, which is the C tier. Moles, huh, what are they good for? Taking up a lot of the board, apparently. They play quite similarly to the base game's cats, having a lot of reach, meaning they can spread all over the board and take up lots of space, because what are moles if not the cats of the, the, the ground. The underground duchy elect officials to give themselves special powers or extra actions or scoring criteria, as well as being able to tunnel around under the map using tunnels and setting up little encampments for other various bonuses. This bit is where my script starts to degrade. I've just written playing as the moles, yada yada, A tier, strategery, a bit more interesting 4X feeling boys. I think what caffeinated sweaty Tom was trying to get at with that is that the underground duchy feel like a more involved version of the cats with different builds to swing for across the course of a game. More tactical flexibility and interesting choices. Go on then, A tier, they deserve it. Next up, we've got the crows, the evil cousins of your regular birds that you know and love. 
And just like the regular birds, they do not care about rules, slipping between clearings and establishing little pots of agents that are going to cause trouble. But the real meat on the crow here are these plot tokens, little powerful abilities that you seed around the map that will confer powerful bonuses when activated. But there's a twist. At almost any time on their turn, an enemy player can guess what that plot token is, wagering a card on the outcome. If they guess correctly, the plot is removed, but if they guess incorrectly, they will give you their card. Sounds kind of juicy, seeding these little plots around and creating mischief and trouble, but often it's just not that interesting. I've never had anyone excited to play as the crows when they get drafted them in a random setup. I like them in theory, but just not in practice. They're maybe my least favorite of the low reach reading board control factions. D tier. A brief aside, it's the new board zone. In the underground expansion, you get two new boards, the lake, and the mountain, I think? I'm in danger of being unbelievably boring here, but like, I don't really like the new root boards. I sort of, when I play root, I just play it on, on the standard board. Is that boring? Is that dull? Maybe, but here's what I think. My favorite part of this game is watching factions bash against each other and the relative plainness of the base game map facilitates that. The basic map? It's the two fort of Root, it's the Blood Gulch, it's the DE Dust, it's the Colony, it's Temple. It is the map that facilitates players making weird decisions and creating relationships and bashing up against each other, which is way more exciting than like, sitting on a barge on this map. Although the barge is pretty cool. I love barges! <laughs> Maybe I'll put these in the, hmm, yeah, good for spice tier. But to be honest, if you're playing so much Root that you need a new board, you need to get bored of route and play another game. Now we are into Root's latest expansion, the Marauder expansion. Oh boy, what a pair of factions this one has. First up is the Lord of the Hundreds, a big warlord that is in charge of a horde of hungry, irritating little rats. I love how focused the design is here. Their chief concerns are just to destroy, demolish, pillage, and burn a singularly focused faction in a way that's very fun to lightly roleplay as. The central gimmick of the Lord of the Hundreds are these mob tokens that you plonk down in clearings, and if they're left unattended, they will detonate, wiping everything out in that territory. This is great for the rats because they score more points based on territories that are completely raised to the ground. The wrinkle here is that a lot of actions are centered around the warlord, this extra large rat with a fancy banner. The warlord wants to fill up their horde with the crafted goods that the vagabond likes and other factions might craft as part of the game. And if they fill it up with enough treasure, they'll get access to more actions. And to further wrinkle that, the Warlord has an ever-changing mood represented by these cards. They could be bitter, jubilant, lavish, or rowdy, but as soon as you acquire the item that that specific mood is after, you can't be that mood anymore. You can't be rowdy once you've got some coins. You can't be jubilant once you've acquired a boot. I adore playing as the rats. Incredibly fun to just sweep across the board and destroy as much as possible whilst gaming the mood of your leader. S tier! Oh, wait, sorry, I'm just hearing that the otters have actually changed it to the otter? We've arrived at the last of the new factions in route. These are the Keepers in Iron, and they're basically a Badger SWAT team. These are my new favorite things in all of route. Let me tell you about why. This band of noble knights are on a mission to recover relics from the forest. These little tokens you can see strewn amongst the trees. And what you're going to be doing on your turns is playing cards into your retinue, a kind of stripped down version of the bird's action programming system. Play a card into the move slot and you can move from a matching clearing of that type, etc, etc. 
The twist here is that the Badgers' central point scoring mechanism is recovering these relics, flipping over these tokens and dragging them out of the forest. The problem with this is that you need to rule clearings adjacent to the token you are delving, the token you're removing from the forest, and the different values not only determine how many points you're going to score for bringing that out of the forest, but also how hard it is and how many clearings you need to rule to do it. So you flip the token and then you score it as points. Simple as that, right? No! You actually need to bring them back to your base to recover them. This is tricky in two ways. Firstly, you need to recover in a clearing that you rule a lot of. But also, these tokens are worth an extra point for any other faction that wants to smash them, making them juicy targets you're protecting with your warriors. And to give you a leg up and not make this catastrophically difficult, your warriors are just a little bit chunkier when they have relic on them. The Keepers in Iron present this fabulous smash and grab dynamic every time they pull something out of the ground, rushing to bring them back and recover them from a base, and trying to manage their retinue so they're not getting rid of big, juicy actions that they need. They're a shade more involved and complex than other factions that are in the game, but I have a great time playing the Keepers in Iron every single time I sit down to have a go. They are my favourite faction even though I don't think I've ever won as them. They're quite tricky to pull off, uh, but they're great. S tier. The Marauder expansion is my favorite expansion for Root so far. It is a great box and the two factions are just leagues above kind of everything else. They're really enjoyable. And if you want to hear more about this expansion, you can listen to the Shut Up and Sit Down podcast. I'll put an episode number somewhere here. It says in the script here that now I need to waggle my eyebrows for that plug, but I can't waggle my eyebrows. Just waggle your eyebrows. So that's all the root expansions. That's every single one. But wait, there's a more. So, Hirelings. They're a chunky new variant for Root that lets you spice up your game with a bunch of non-player factions that you can wrestle control over to do little special things on the board. And there are tons of them. So doing an individual tier list for all these Hirelings would just be crazy, wouldn't it? Right? Okay, I was thinking about going through all of the individual Hirelings and ranking them, but that would just be a little bit silly. So instead, I'm going to give you the general idea. The Hirelings are what makes the Marauder expansion my favourite route expansion because it makes the game so much bendier. A far, far easier game to play at two due to the factions having more reach and the Hirelings presenting interesting opportunities and variability. The Hirelings also lean into Root's desires for weird board states, simulation and odd narratives. Because the control of these Hirelings swings from player to player every few turns, you end up with this board that's always changing, shifting and odd every single time you play. Having a shaky and tenuous relationship with a huge bear who can destroy an entire clearing, that's so Root. A lot of these Hirelings don't have powers that are dramatic or game-changing or completely eruptive and explosive and ridiculous. They're just a light dusting of theme and a symmetry into a game that sings when those parts are firing on all cylinders. They're a good little expansion and there's lots of ones to choose from. They're all pretty cool. And that's it. That really is all the expansions for Root. I lied, it's not it. There's more expansions for Root. We've got three more things to go over here. The Landmarks, the New Vagabonds, and the Clockwork Expansions. However, my coverage of these three things is going to be pretty paper thin, and here's why. First up, we got the Landmarks. I don't think they actually add much to the game. They're sort of a dusting of extra flavour, but a dusting that's barely noticeable, like when they put a tiny little bit of sugar on a croissant, but not enough. You want that, like, almondy nutty goodness, you know? Extra Vagabonds? There's loads of them now. You can even play with two Vagabonds in one game. Why would I want to do that? I hate the Vagabond, they're horrible. I didn't think that any opinions that I might give on a faction that I baseline hate would be useful, so just know there's loads of them. They're probably interesting if you're a big fan of the Vagabond. I don't care. And finally, we have the slightly trickier one. Root has two clockwork expansions that let you play the game solo or as a co-op game against automated factions. I did give this a go. I sat myself down to play a co-op game against the cats. And you know, by the end of one game, kind of realized it wasn't really for me. This kind of experience solo, not really my thing. I prefer my sort of solo experiences, a bit more puzzly, a bit less big and grandiose. So if you want an opinion about this stuff, 
you're gonna have to find one someone else. Look under some like rocks and have a little look in some trees and maybe there'll be someone who'll tell you about Solo Root, just not me. And that really is the end of this video. That's all the root expansions. I don't think there's anything to be confused about here. It's all self-explanatory. If you are confused about all the root expansions, just print out the tier list. We've made, we made a printer safe version. Just bring it to your local shop give it to the, the person behind the counter, they'll sort you out, they'll know what's up. Nothing could be simpler, I'm, I'm great at my job. It's so warm. Do all, that, do all that make sense? It's really hot in here. Imagine, imagine what it's like to be a printer. Yeah. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye.